Welcome back everyone to our Let's Play series of Motorsport Manager. Now, if you haven't had a chance yet to watch the previous video where we had a rain soaked race in Milan, then I definitely recommend you do so because I tried some crazy stuff there on the, on the strategy, uh, just again, to have some fun because that's what I'm, we're focused on now. We've done the tier three where we won the championship, won bunches of races and just focused really hard on that. Same thing in tier two, one races, one championship. Now we're in tier one and I've done some fun things. So let's go ahead and um, if you haven't had a chance so far uh, to watch a couple of videos that I've done previously, we'll give you some background as to how we got to where we are now. The video I did on my thoughts after 100 plus hours in the game and also the uh, practice session video that I did where I talk about how I approach practice sessions and prepare for a race. Both of those videos uh, will sort of give you some background as to how we got here because this is not my first season in Tier 1. I've played around. I've had some fun. I've tried out some new things that I haven't had a chance to do up until now in our Let's Play series. So let's start by taking a look at where we are in the standings. Now we're ready for event 10 of 16. So we're roughly half, if you count the, the previous race, we're, uh, I had planned on showing you basically the last half of this season. Right now we're doing great, uh, but as I mentioned in the previous video at the race at Milan, uh, this is misleading. This, as well as the fact that we are currently leading the team standings, and that is, which one of the things we'll look at here momentarily, is that Steinman has a nice lead on everyone. Okay, and I've made some good headway into that lead in several particular part categories on the car, but by no means are we the best car on the grid right now. Steinman has a very uh, commanding lead in that area, and they have the best drivers on the grid. So what has actually happened to allow us to be in the lead both in the driver and team standings right now is that Steinman, the first few races of the year, they had some wrecks and some bad luck that it cost them a lot of points, but they've been making up the gap on me. So the gap is really not that much now based off of how the points are awarded, uh, particularly for the winner and second or third place uh, position. So they're not far away from taking the lead back from me, but let's go ahead and take a moment. You can see we've got a car part that is almost done. It'll be done in, well, one hour. So as soon as we hit this continue button, it's going to be done. But let's take a look at where we are on the car. And it's pretty easy to see where I've been able to make some headway. Engine, we are second, but it looks like here we're pretty close to number one. We're number one in acceleration, which is our gearbox, and we're number one on brakes. So I've made headway there. Those, by, by no coincidence, are also the HQ buildings that I upgraded first. But you can see here, front wing, I haven't been able to do a whole lot with that. Uh, we're working on it, but we haven't been able to work, uh, get as much done there. Uh, we're doing great right now in the suspension, considering that very recently we were dead last in that as well. And then we're doing pretty nicely on the rear wing as well, now being in second, although it looks like we're a good bit of performance off of first. Before we get this new part done and we take a look at designing new parts, because uh, there's a thing, a couple of things I want to mention there. Let's take a look at our HQ, and I'll show you some of the fun that I've been having. If you look down the side here, you can see legendary for everything, except for suspension, and lo and behold, we're two wakes away from that being maxed out as well. So when I come in and look at this screen, we're about to be maxed out here. We're maxed out here, 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 and you can see all over the place. So the, really the only things that we haven't maxed out are not performance-related. The forecasting center, we still have one more to do there. And actually, I could get started on that if I wanted to, uh, based off the cash flow we have coming in. Um, we've got the design center and factory. Still got one more level on the factory and two more levels on the design center. The reason I haven't been worried about the design center is, honestly, I think it's vastly underpowered uh, in the game. You know, typically in a game like this, everybody looks for, it's a management style game, so everybody does the spreadsheets, you try to figure out the best way of doing everything, the quickest way of getting from A to B, which is the championship basically in this uh, situation. But here, you know, minus 0.6 days on part design time really doesn't do much for me. 
as best I can tell, unless I'm missing something, really what it does is it unlocks a couple of buildings over here. And that is the road car factory and the theme park. Now, both of these I intend to build, but we're a ways off from those uh, because, quite simply, they take a ton of money and you have to have everything else fully upgraded, or at least the, the, as far as the factory and design center go. They also make quite a bit of money for you. Uh, essentially, what these do, as far as I'm aware, because I haven't done too much checking on it, um, I've tried not to look at different strategies for other people um, have used and, and what drivers they get and what crew members they get and all that kind of stuff, which you can easily find online. I've tried to stay away from that because I want to play it for my own personal joy and, and, and really focus on the enjoyment rather than seeing what those who have played this game a lot have uh, figured out on their spreadsheets. So uh, I've tried to stay away from that, but you can see we're, we're looking great on HQ buildings. All right, and then here, let's go ahead and hit continue here. Let's get through. There we go. So now we've got our new engine is built, 2033 on that. In fact, let's go ahead and do, um, I'll tell you what, we'll hold off on, on that because I don't want to lose any more days than I have to on, on designing a new part. So let's just come in to fit parts and let's see what we've got. Of course, we've got some work to do on reliability, as is always the case with new parts. But if we look at the engine, this one gets us just a, a bit above where we were. But the good thing is we started the year, you know, right at 2000, but then we have one at 1930. And I'm trying to get the cars as even as I can uh, while I'm making these parts. And you can see both of these drivers are pretty happy. So I always like seeing that. I'm, I'm used to both, basically everybody being content because they're both very talented drivers and I want to give them the best car that I possibly can. So, and this will do that for the engine. Now you can see brakes. We're doing pretty good. Still got some, some work to do on reliability. Although we'll have to see where this is after the repairs are done from the race. And then if we take a look at our front wing, um, I actually think we may have a bug here related to this one. And we'll take a look at that here momentarily in the design section. As you can see, we have two average parts. And I'll allude to more about that here momentarily. Haven't spent a whole lot of time on the gearbox uh, because we've already been so high up on that. I've been trying to bring up our wicker spots. The rear wing, you can see I've already gone through full legendary mode on it. And we now have the strongest rear wings that, that I can make for this year. All right. And they're both equipped already on the car. Suspension, uh, we're, we're getting there on the suspension. Two average parts there as well. So now with that in mind, let's take a look at the front wing. You can see I've already done two iterations here, two development cycles on it. Okay. So if I come into front wing, here's the bug. It says this slot is unlocked on the third iteration of the design. Well, I'm at the third iteration of the design and we've already seen that I definitely have the HQ buildings unlocked for these things. So there should be nothing holding us back yet there is. So this has been something I've encountered this once before and I had to end up going back to a much earlier save. At this point, I really don't want to do that because again, some of the things in this game are starting to wear on me a little bit and this is one of them. I'm starting to see things like this. Um, also the interviews that they want you to do after a lot of the races are on my nerves. <laughs> So now I'm at a point where I can't develop my wing anymore because for some reason this slot is locked up. HQ is fully upgraded for the, the wing. And I've got, you know, I've already, you've already seen two iterations that I've done or two cycles of development I've done. So I'm ready for the third one, but yet I can't get there. So, and if we come in just for a moment, if we head back over to fitting parts on the suspension. I've already gone through two parts. Now there are some designers that will uh, give you the ability to actually make two parts at the same time. Uh, I don't have one of those right now. 
So I've had to go through two development cycles here. So we should be ready for that third slot on the suspension. And yet we're not. So this is the kind of thing that's driving me nuts right now in the game. And like I said, in the past, I've just sort of said, OK, I'm not sure what's happening because this has happened before. And I'm just I don't want to go back saves. I've run races. I've done the work. I've done all that stuff. And I'm tired of retracing my steps over and over and over again. So at this point, I'm really, really looking forward to the mods coming in. Uh, but until then, I'm going to have as much fun as I possibly can, championship or no championship. So this is driving me nuts because these are the two parts I need to be working on. I've already maxed out what I can do here on the rear wing for this season. So I've got all I can there uh, as far as, you know, as development goes. We still got some room left on developing out to our max potential on the parts we do have. So now I'm left with what do I work on? basically of these three. And if we look at what we've got, we're second, first, and first. So I just did a new engine and let's see what the performance on that was. And let's see, what was it? All right, 2033 and 2049 is the max. So we'll be looking around 2050 to see how, how much higher we can get over the 2050 number. All right, let's see what we've got. Now, another thing I'll tell you that is also starting to really grind on me is the randomness with which these components seem to get thrown in there. Now, I understand I don't have the best designer. I got that. But I would appreciate the ability to sort of guide this process a little bit more. In other words, meaning I would like to be able to tell my designer that, hey, at the beginning of the year when we're designing this car, I want to focus on this or that. And in this case, I would tell them I'm not interested in these risky parts. Okay, now I know they're very useful toward the end of um, a season if you want to build up the performance in a part that you're not going to use, but rather is going to become your baseline for the next year. I got that. That's, that's perfectly fine. I'd be willing to do without that in order to have the benefit of not having to have this. I'm sitting here with great slots that are all but useless to me right now. I mean, I understand this is the one I'm going to have to use here if I use one of them at all, but I don't have any use for a risky part. It's just a decision. Now, I understand full well that if you wanted to do this, you know, I can use this, choose the two options. So I've got plenty of options here but I just don't like how the game does it. There are some parts where I've had entire rows be nothing but risky parts. I hate that. I'm not interested in those, and I wish the game would give me an option to say, okay, because of your designer's limitations, because of the limitations that you had, for example, on the car, on these particular stats from tire wear, fuel efficiency, improvability, and so on, because of the tire or the, beside the uh the t because of the type of car design decisions you made and the fact that you don't have the best designer you know because we're in tier one and we only have just over three stars out of five much better designers we could get so with all of that being said i wish the game would say okay we're going to give you if you choose we're going to give you options to develop your parts without these risk levels, but they're not going to give you near as much. In other words, instead of 70 to the max, maybe it's only 30 to the max. You know, so you simply miss out on some of that. I would be perfectly fine with that. That makes sense within the, the realm of the game to me and how I want to play the game. So one of the mods I'll be looking for is the ability to remove these parts. Uh, and I would be perfectly fine with, say, instead of this, 60% for a risk level, I'm fine with maybe a plus 30, maybe a plus 20, whatever the case may be, but I'm fine with that because I don't want the risk level. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with what we've got here. Okay, 25 to the max. I'm trying to stay away from these max numbers uh, because I'm developing parts so quickly, it's hard for me to spend very much time uh, focusing on these in the factory. All right, so I've got this, or do I want to go 
this direction. It's going to be hard to pass this up given our choices. And then use this, although it adds 10 days, which I hate to do. But let's go ahead and start with that. Let's do these two things. Okay, I believe 2050 is what we're trying to get above. You can see we're already above that. And we've got one more slot to fill in. Now, do I want to add five days and go with a good part or just stay with the average part and add no additional days? Because we would add a total of seven between these, uh, again, without adding any risk level, such as choosing this one. All right, so I believe what I'm going to do here is just, let's see, 2094. And this gives me a chance to see, okay, here we go. Same thing again. Now we're on the epic level and I've got nothing useful if I stick with not using anything. So that's one of the things that's really starting to grate on me about the game. Let's go ahead and make this one. Uh, this will be a very incremental change, but our risk level is still none. Let's go ahead and do this, get that part underway. Okay, so it's going to take 30 days. So it's going to take a whole month to do that. We've got our HQ that will be done here in a couple of weeks. Our next race is in 10 days. Okay, let's go ahead and get that. See what our mail is. Okay, car repair is now finished. We can come in and take a look at this. Uh, and just sort of finish up the development idea. Uh, again, I understand that it's, you know, based on my staff. Now, in this particular, she is terrible with engines. So I understand that that probably increased the likelihood of getting those risky parts. I get that. I would just like to have an option to where I could stay away from that. Because right now, it's, so, it's basically forcing me to do that. And I don't like that. I, I want the options to stay away from the risk level. So if you would just give me an option to say, hey, look, I understand that we're you're terrible as a designer in the engine area, that's okay. We just won't be able to improve as much, but I still want to stay away from the risky parts. All right, let's see. We have, yeah, we have a sponsorship slot available here. Let's take a, a quick glance at the sponsorship options because we've now reached the ability to attract five-star sponsors because our marketability is almost maxed out, or at least it's plenty high enough to get the sponsorship level fives. And that's what we've got here, $550,000 per race, plus an upfront payment of a million dollars. That's a good bit more. Uh, if you remember, the four-star sponsors generally won't give you any more than about, I think about 400,000, maybe a little bit more per race is the most I've seen. Here you can see, Fixed amount per race, 800000 plus an upfront payment of a million. And then here, not quite as lucky, but we did get $500,000 on only a four-star sponsor. I don't remember seeing that in the past, but I could be wrong. It could be something I'm simply forgetting. All right, so hopefully we'll get over the next few days and before our next race, we'll have that ability. Also reminds me that I forgot to see what we were actually looking at here. Okay, I've been spending a lot of Time on performance, you can see that's where everything is focused. All right, let's see. Brakes are great on reliability. Okay, we need to work on this new engine. Okay, and it should be done one day before the race. Okay, and that would be awesome. And I think we're good on everything else. Everything else is fairly high. We're just in the 80s here, but so be it. It's not that bad. Okay, let's go ahead and move forward. See, our reliability work is going to be done. Okay, and we're ready to travel. Now, unfortunately, we have what I also consider to be a bug that I've started seeing is I have no offers for this sponsorship slot. Now, this has happened to me earlier this season in previous races where I actually only had one offer. So... I'm not sure if that's a bug. So some things, maybe that's intended, uh, although I've never had it happen before in my gameplay until I got to tier one. Uh, I've had some things happen a couple of times, and at this point, I don't want to go back on, you know, to get any previous saves and try to see if it'll work out better the next time around.
Okay, so reliability work is complete. Let's make sure that our performance work is being sent where we want it. Okay, so we're working hard to get this part up. Okay, that makes sense to me. We're working hard here to max that out. Also makes sense to me. A little bit of room here on the engine, although it's not that huge of a deal. Okay, so we're almost done. Let's go ahead and add this in simply because it seems like we're getting very close to maxing out these things. So we'll go ahead and just let them all go into the same situation there. So we only have two options to choose from here, third or first. And of course, we're going to choose the third. Our other sponsorship option would have been for something like sixth or seventh or eighth or somewhere in that range. Okay, so tire selection. And so we look here. All right, tire wear is going to be low. We're running 16 laps, which gives us the opportunity for a one-stop strategy. But in because of the fun I want to have, I may not do that at all. Uh, if I do it, it will be with Laura here because her smoothness is at 14 as opposed to nine here for our other driver. So we may split it up and do two stops and one stop. But of course, maximum fun for me would be two stops with both drivers. Let's just go full bore the entire race. Uh, so we'll, let's go ahead and do, you can do five all the way across. Uh, I think that's what I'm going to do here because I'm undecided what I want to do with her. But I think I'm going to give the breakdown like this because I don't know that I'm going to be using the medium tire here. I think I just want to go full bore fast as we can go and let's see how it turns out. That's kind of where I want to be. Again, it's wonderful to look up here and see delighted and happy. I like these smiley faces. Okay, let's change around. I know at least I've got an engine to change out. Uh, it looks like everything else is pretty much where it needs to be. Unless I'm missing something. So let's go ahead and change out our engine. And so it's going to be a nice jump of not far from 40 points in performance there. Okay, so now we have Delighted and Happy. They swap places, I believe, on me there. But they're, you can see here on the, the diagram here, they're pretty close on the car. And that's really the goal because I don't have a clear-cut number one and clear-cut number two driver. Okay, so let's see. We've got our sponsor, we've got our tires, and we've got our car ready to go. Let's head to the racetrack. We've practiced done and now we're ready to choose our bonuses and get this race started so the bonuses i have chosen for laura refueling bonus and race trim now something apparently happened that i missed so we're we're missing our second one here which is to decrease the mistake chance on a pit stop which is what i was going to use so something happened that i missed there to take that away from me, which would be a uh, relationship status with the mechanic. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that. The other, we'll just choose the race trim bonus for her. Now for Shiaki, race trim and tires. Pretty simple there. Uh, I know I've got the option for tire changes, but those are really not the limiting factor uh, generally in these things when I'm doing pit stops, uh, particularly for her because she runs through tires pretty quickly and she's really going to run through tires quickly today, but we'll take a look at that just in a second. Then we got the super overtake mode, uh, which is pretty awesome, but I'm not sure how much I would be able to use it because I try to keep the car as light as I can, uh, but I do like using that high engine mode. So we're starting on super soft for both. The difference will be that I feel pretty comfortable that the super soft will get Laura a one-stop strategy. We have 16 laps in the race. 95% uh, on the setup, which was, you know, pretty nice. They're not the, the best available, but pretty nice. The main thing here is that we need her to run eight and eight, at least on the tires. But this shows that she should be able to get nine laps. So being able to get eight laps, at least out of that, should be fine. Uh, as far as fuel, I'm giving her a little bit more fuel just in case I get to run nine laps. So nine and seven would be pretty good for that last stint. I'd be able to push a little harder on the tire in that last stint maybe so i'm giving her a little extra fuel just in case that option op opens up but we'll see how that goes now here 97 percent on the setup same thing on the super sauce but we're going to be right on the edge 
of trying to make a one-stop strategy. So I decided we're not even going to try it because that would basically mean I would have to sit back and, you know, nurse the tires and, and not push the car at all. I'm just not interested in that right now. I want to have some fun. We're going to push this. In 16 laps, if we do two stops, then we can do five, five, and six, or, you know, whatever combination to that you want to do, of course. So what I'm going to do is start off with a five lap stint and we are going to push extremely hard on these tires and see how it turns out. I mean, we're, again, we're going to have some fun here. So I'm giving, you know, we're going to start out using the high fuel mode. So this was enough for five laps and we'll see how it goes there as to how much fuel we want to do for the next stop and how hard to push the car and all those sorts of things. But for now, let's get this thing moving. I'm ready to get to racing and let's see how many spots we can make up from the back of the field, which is where Shiaki is going to be starting. Get our camera turned around right there. Looks good. So starting dead last on the field. All right, and we always have a terrible first lap, roughly. The AI seems to get bogged down really easily as you've got so many cars in a certain area. So right now, this is why I didn't pull it on full attack mode at the very beginning. But if we can get this thing to get single file, then we should be able to make up some spots. But right now, we are doing nothing good. This is pathetic, quite frankly, for a driver of her caliber to still be in 19th position at this point. But we still got plenty of time for her to make this up. I know everybody's pushing hard at the beginning. And that has a lot to do with the fact that she hasn't been able to make up spots. Uh, but I look ahead of her and I see that Laura is doing a great job. Okay, we're on lap three. Laura goes into neutral. Hopefully I didn't push her too long. And Shiaki will continue to push extremely hard. Okay, as we focus on Shiaki here, who is behind, She's in 14th, and the reason I say behind is because she's behind Laura, who is running a much different strategy and doesn't have to push as hard at the beginning. All right, right now our two-stop idea is not looking good. Okay, so five laps of fuel. Let's see, two point, yeah, we're still looking you know, okay there, but we're just not making up any spots. Laura is killing it right now. And this is where that smoothness kills you when you don't have it. Okay, I'm gonna have Laura conserve a little bit. I may have been too aggressive with her from the start. Uh, let's see, we've actually got enough fuel on board and enough tire on board I believe let's see when we get back around if we as long as we got about 1.05 remaining we'll be able to do it okay we're not going to be able to do it uh, another one lap at least not at that uh, fuel level or engine level rather all right so we're going to go 6.79 here try to run a six lap stint uh, it should take about six seconds Okay, tires changed, pitch strategy unchanged. Okay, so we're good to go there. And so far, Laura is looking great. So we'll go ahead and switch over to her, keeping out our pit stop, and sure enough, a horrendous pit stop. Lost about 3.8 seconds there, so that is not helping anything. So it looks like our race is probably about over for Shiaki. So at this point, you know, she's really fast, so that's going to help. But that extra pit stop is only going to be useful if you cannot have any problems in the pits and the tires last, you know, and give you what you need out of them as well. All right, so we'll see what she can do coming from the back. She's got some clean tracks, so she can run some good laps. Uh, and we'll have to see how that goes. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to focus for now on Laura. 
who is okay so now we're at uh, eight uh i don't really trust going any farther there so it looks like we're gonna have to try to do this on eight and eight so let's go ahead and set up her pit stop and 8.69 should be just enough to get us where we want to go i wish i could choose the fast option we're not going to get that option so she's going to have to do balanced and hopefully there will be no mistakes so we're going to have her push for the remainder of this time whereas shiaki is does not have that luxury i need her to go at least six laps on these tires all right she's coming through the field she's up to 15th now uh, and making up some time again she's able to run good lap times uh, a couple of seconds generally per lap quicker than what laura was able to run because she had cleaner track all right let's see how we come out in the pit stop rotation okay actually turned out pretty good okay so the mistake it just goes to show you how this all plays out the clean air was able to make up the clean air and faster lap times were able to make up for the bad pit stop, which was, I think, around three and a half seconds slower than it should have been because of the mistake. And I, that is something I've been seeing a lot more in Tier 1 than I ever did before. Uh, now, granted, I didn't use fast pit stops all that often for that very reason, but it seemed like I've been seeing a lot more mistakes, even on you know 10 to 15% to mistake chances. Seems like there's been a lot more than 15% of the time we've had mistakes. All right, so let's go ahead and focus back on our other driver. And she is now going to be coming in this next time by, based off of her fuel and 50% tire wear. Uh, the problem is going to be the fuel. She didn't have enough fuel to go any further, which is perfectly fine because I don't really need her to. But let's have her go into full attack mode and see if she can make up uh, any time that is humanly possible for her. Uh, again, we already know Laura. Her, her strategy is set. She's sitting in great position in eight. That is awesome. And she's not pushing the tires because we don't need her to. All right, so let's go ahead and go again. Full overtake mode, full everything. Trying to make up all the time we can before our pit stop. All right, so we're into fourth. All right, so let's see. We've got, okay, now it's time to set up our pit stop. I wanted to use all the fuel that I could because that sometimes throws me off in the fuel option screen. So now we go on to our final super soft set of the race. And so we need four laps of fuel. Let's go 4.6. To take as little time in the pits as we can and again 11 percent chance of a mistake it happened last time let's see what happens this time okay again we'll switch over to laura okay this time great on the refueling it's almost as if they had they knew they had to make up for what happened last time okay let's come back out of that and just go into straight push All right, four laps to go, 70% roughly on the tires. And of course, at this point, all right, let's take a look here and see what we've got. All right, we're looks like we're trying to move up into second position there. Or excuse me, move up into first. We must have another pit stop that I missed. All right, looks like both of these drivers are done with pit stops. Looks like everybody in the top. Wow, well, okay, so... The two-stop strategy has cost us for sure. All right, looks like everybody ahead is now done with pit stops. And, okay, we're up to 10th, so we're leading, and we're also in 10th. We're on better tires than the second-place driver, as far as the, the softness of the tire. All right, but what I see happening is Steinman, you want to see how far Steinman is a better than everybody else on their car? You're seeing it now. Look at second place come in on me. All right, we got two laps left. We've got no choice. Let's just go and push. I don't want to go full attack mode because I don't want to get down below 25%. Uh, percent. 
But now we're going to go full attack mode here in seventh. But yeah, this is what happens when Steinman gets behind you. Yeah, I've got nothing for that. Uh, their car is just that good. Uh, and of course, their drivers are also very good as well. So that combination is just deadly. All right, so we're in second and seventh, which isn't terrible. But as we get down to our final lap, all right, let's see. Looks like on our final lap, do we have enough fuel from sixth? Actually, no, we do not. We are not going to have enough fuel, so I'm going to take that down. Wow, I miscalculated that. And we've got tons of fuel here, so we're going to put this in full overtake mode and give it all we have. No reason. Oops, that didn't do what I wanted it to do. There we go. Full attack mode there. See if we can't get this victory. All right, so second and sixth. But we are closing in on that victory. Can we get by them? Oh, we're right there. So close. Here's our opportunity. Can we get position? And did we do it? We got it. Now, that's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. And we ran out of fuel with our sixth place car, but we had just enough fuel to get to where we needed. Wow, what a finish. I wasn't sure we were going to have enough to get to them there to end, but we had just enough tire left and just enough fuel left. That's why I usually like to give it a little bit of extra fuel is just for that reason. If we're within striking distance, we're going to go for it at the end of the race. So we passed them, even though they had a lot fewer laps on their tires, a lot fresher tires. That is awesome. That's the kind of fun I want to have. Even if we wouldn't have won that, the idea that we had a shot at it was pretty amazing. All right, so we're on target. We're going to get the million dollar bonus. So we finish uh, in sixth place with our two-stop strategy, which I must say is higher than I thought we were going to end up. I knew we had speed, but after we didn't get really anywhere in that first five-lap stint, I thought we were in deep trouble. So the victory really helps us out in the driver championship. Uh, things are pretty close here at the top between us and Steinman. Let's see how. All right, now we've got the 20-point lead in the team championship after 10 of 16 rounds. So a lot of fighting, a lot of fighting still left to do. Um, then we get into some of this stuff. Made that look easy? I don't think so. That's not quite how that played out. But let's go ahead and get through our final couple of screens. When we look at morale, which I've got to imagine is going to be maxed out, as well as the chairman happiness. Okay, morale, 100%, 100%, everything 100% there. Okay, looking great. We came in first. Uh, this is, of course, team victory uh, instead of simply a driver victory. Happiness is at 100%. Marketability is essentially 100%. It's 99 point something, I believe. Okay, now we get our unlock back, our, our risk taker, which would have, I think, helped us out quite a bit there. Uh, but you never know. You know, I think a lot of the bonuses are very close. Um, it's interesting to see how my reserve driver is doing. I picked her up. Uh, this is our first full season with us, I believe, or maybe the second full season with us. Uh, and just as a project, sort of to see how it goes. I'm only paying, I think, 70000 per race, so it's you know, basically nothing considering we're making well over $2 million generally. But she had five-star potential. So I wanted to give her a shot. She is nearing three-star driver now. Uh, she very smooth. Uh, and you can imagine after all the talk I've done about smoothness and tire wear and all that, you can imagine why I chose the driver there. Great overtaking, or at least I think it will be if we can continue to improve. Because it looks like in the game, you can see no further improvements here. Looks like you improve up through about age until you turn 27. So that gives her plenty of time to get much better. The question will become, she's got some things that are very low on the scale. Uh, the, the question will become, is she able to get these up to a reasonable level to get anywhere near this potential? Uh, and we'll see. I've got... You know, a lot of buildings that are unlocked, so she should be doing a lot of improvements 
at the at the maximum rate that she can. Uh, so we end up with about 2.2 million. I will definitely take that. So we'll call it a video here. Thank you very much for joining me on what I think was a very entertaining race. A lot of fun for me to call that race with two different strategies and being ultra aggressive. Thank you for joining me once again and stay tuned for more Motorsport Manager.